uh, when uh, Frank Grillo uh, shoots to get their attention, he shoots yeah. up at the, and then Ryan Reynolds He's says, like, what if somebody's upstairs? <laughs> made me laugh. Impersonation. Genuinely made me laugh. That So you said you saw Fatherhood this morning? Yes. All right. It's, uh, I've got red eyes because of it, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Nice. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get it started, man. It is Ticket Studs, episode three. Ooh. What's up, buddy? Not much. How are you, sir? Oh, do pretty good. Um, good. I, you know, I liked one of the ones we saw, and we'll get into that. Um, so we're going to start with Fatherhood. That's the Kevin Hart movie that's on Netflix. Did you feel you know kind of cheated out of not being able to see it in the theater now that we have all these on-demand at-home options no i i think it was a a better movie for netflix uh just because um i don't know if i would actually go to a movie theater and see that movie um i feel like with you know going to a movie now um it's something that i would want to see and pay money to see um so i feel like having a netflix movie about that subject was good, but I think seeing it in theaters might have not taken away, um, but I think it would have made me not want to go and see it initially because, you know, or wait for a streaming service because I don't want to go and spend money on something like that. Because as we talked about previously, I'm not a Kevin Hart fan. You're not so, a Kevin like, Hart fan, but it, uh, that does make sense. You know, you can kind of go into it thinking that it's going to be, um, you know, I mean, there's no action spectacle, you know, there's no, mm-hmm. like, it's not a Marvel movie. It's not a summer blockbuster. It's, you know, kind of a more yeah. understated movie. Uh, so this episode, we're going to review fatherhood, like I just said, and we're also going to review Hitman's wife's bodyguard, uh, which is a summer action block. I wouldn't say blockbuster because we'll get into it. Yeah. Uh, but that was one where I was like, well, I'm going to go to the theater because I don't know that it's streaming anywhere it might it might be but i was like no i'm gonna go to the theater it's been the first time in 18 months um and i went to a theater near here i was so excited to go back to the theater and then this one i may never go back to a theater because (laughs) i don't know if it was the pandemic or if it was just already going downhill but it was one of those theaters where the the entire floor is sticky everywhere you go Uh, yeah um there's nobody at the front you got to get your tickets i already got i got my ticket ahead of time on my phone Mm-hmm. I'm one of those people. Me uh, too. You go to the concession stand to get your tickets. It's the same kid doing three different things and it takes forever. And you're like, dude, come <laughs> on, man. I'm, I want to help this movie theater industry. I don't want theaters to go away. There's talk about moving to exclusively on, at home on demand streaming. No, yeah. no, 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 no. I want the theater, but yeah, that's, I mean, it affairs. sounds like, it sounds like you had a similar experience to mine. Um, I went to Cruella last week and then this week, um, the hitman's wife's bodyguard. I keep wanting to call it the hitman's bodyguard's wife, but you know, <laughs> it doesn't um, matter. It's, it's yeah, all it's interchangeable. One of those, it's one of those jumbles. Um, but going there, I got off work early and was like, I'm going to catch a matinee. It's, you know, Tuesday. So it's $5 movies. Um, I get there, I buy my ticket in advance and they have kiosks, but I don't think you can get it from there because it says in the app, like you have to go and pick up your ticket from, you have to show your credit card, which, For some reason, I didn't have to do this time. Um, But after about 20 minutes, um, I was stuck behind this lady who had never made a transaction before in her life. Um, So I had to deal with that because she's like, which way does a card go? And the guy was, you know, trying to help her. And he's like, everywhere else you press the green button here, it's the blue button. You know, red still is red. And it's like, Okay, so it's uh, and he was, you know, they bought popcorn and tried to decide on sodas. Luckily, he didn't have to do the sodas um, because that would have taken another 10 minutes. But he went and got the popcorn. He's like big old tub and just scoop. It's like, oh, my God. And then there was someone in front of me. And it's like, this is this is ridiculous. So I yeah. you know, missed the first couple of minutes of the hit man's wife's bodyguard. That's the okay. Word. Well, so, I don't know that you missed much, but we'll we'll get into that. Uh, let's go ahead and kick it off with Fatherhood. Uh, that, yes. Uh, it's streaming on Netflix right now, starring Kevin Hart. Uh, mm-hmm. Alfred Woodard is in it. Lil Rel Howery. Um, uh, pretty great cast. Uh, what did you think, bud? You watched it this morning, right? 
I did watch it this morning and um, it, uh, I know I had talked about it in the first one. It was one of the movies that I said I would go see because I'm not a Kevin Hart fan. Um, I think this movie actually changed my mind on that. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, it's, it's just heartbreaking. It is such a good movie that is heartbreaking, but heartwarming at the same time. Um, you know, going into it, I, I had that expectation, uh, which I can, you know, go over a little bit of what the story is. So a husband has his wife, he's a widower, they kind of get into what happened. So he's raising his daughter by himself and everyone says that, you know, I, you, or you can't do this. Like she needs a woman in her life and everything like that. And I think it was very appropriate around Father's Day because I think it came out last week, which, you know, Father's Day this past weekend. So of course they're going to drop right. something like that. Um, but the, the movie itself, like going through it and, you know, she's a baby at the beginning and then there's a jump where she's, I think in maybe first grade or second grade. So one of those ages um, and just watching it like, it was, like I said, heartbreaking at a lot of points, but I feel like it, it hit the nail on the head because I don't have kids of my own. I know you don't have kids that I know of. Um, so <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure that there's people that go through what Kevin Hart's character did. Um, and just, you know, knowing that there's people out there having to deal with that and, and trying to make life and not have a lot of people believe in them uh, was just, you know, it, it was like, oh my gosh, this sucks. But I mean, it was a good movie overall. And I guess it's based on a book called Two Kisses, the story, or Two Kisses for Maddie, a story of love and loss. So, I mean, I, it was like a bestseller and, and they made it into a movie, which is really good. So, yeah. Yeah, it was based on a true story. Uh, that was my main takeaway from it too. It, this movie had two big things going for it, heart and heart. Uh, Aww. Because you know within the first 10 minutes you know you're in a pool of tears they're like what mm -hmm. you know uh yeah. I, it's still taking some time for me but netflix you know with these original with original movies or original content um mm -hmm. it's time to start taking them a little more seriously you know i yeah. just expected it to not be good i've expected most of the things i've seen on netflix exclusive uh to not be good because i'm like well it's not a like a legit release it's not in the theater exactly um, that's kind of the point uh they can kind of do their own thing um sometimes it's not going to be great sometimes it's going to be good you know it just yeah. depends on what the project is uh and kevin hart you kind of hit the nail on the head you know i've never been a huge fan of kevin's stand-up um you know uh, he's got some bits here or there i think he's i think he's a funny individual i think he exudes chemistry or uh, uh charisma i think he exudes yeah. funniness um you know, he's got that kind of voice that can just make you laugh just the way he says a certain word, um, mm -hmm. material, whatever. Uh, and then the movies, he's been a, a bunch of dumb summer fun movies, you know, Ride Along yeah. and, and um, uh, you know, Jumanji, all the different, the two Jumanji, Jumanji which movies. was which I really like Jumanji, all the rock <clears> movies, he, you know, he and Dwayne, the rock Johnson have done a lot of movies. Yeah. together. But this one, I mean, his acting really goes to the next level in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's making you cry uh, the emotional scenes. He's not. He's not being Kevin Hart. Like he's not, you know, he's not yeah. kind of overacting or or kind of commanding in, in chewing the scenery. You know, it's kind of understated. He's like, man, you know, there are times where I'm like, this dude really feels like a widower, you know, where yeah. in other instances it may not be the case. Um, I thought it was really good. You know, I did have some issues with it. Uh, you know, I'm uh, I don't want to, I'll be the rain cloud a little bit. Uh, super duper cliched. I mean, it yeah. hit pretty much every rut in a movie like this, you know, the, the bumbling dad trying to change diapers. And I mean, there's tons of throw up and poop jokes throughout. Yeah. Um, so it, whatever. But I feel like, I feel like for someone like Kevin Hart with that, um, they could have made it way heavier handed with the jokes and all that other stuff. But I feel like even though there were that joke, like, you know, those, those jokes in it, it wasn't like, it's Kevin Hart. He's wacky, Ugh, crazy. <laughs> um, so I, I felt like they, they did a good job with like, I know you said there's a lot of those, but I feel like it might've been just enough to make it like, you know, it's a, a dramedy, I guess is what you call it. Drama comedy. So yeah, it, no, it, you're, you're like absolutely that. right. Uh, they could, it could have been overdone and over the top and it wasn't, which is good. And the reason I don't really take that much away from it for those reasons for being kind of cliched is that's kind of what you expect. You know what I'm saying? Like it's mm -hmm. comfort food. A movie like this is, 
you know, chicken and noodles. It's a grilled cheese sandwich. It's going to be, you know, exactly what you're getting when you go into it. Yeah. Um, and then there's a couple of surprises here or there. Uh, one of the issues I did have is when they do the jump forward, you know, five or six years, you know, five years later or whatever. Yeah. Um, everybody looks exactly the same. Now I know yeah. appearances don't change drastically in five years, you know, especially with adults, you know, you're yeah. kind of who you are. Um, but it literally looked like, okay, we're done filming all the scenes with the baby. Now let's bring in the five-year-old. Yeah. Bring in the six-year-old, uh, who was great, by the way. Melody Heard uh, is the yes. uh, young Maddie's name. She was a, she's so good in this movie as a little, a little child actor. She, she was. Uh, I will say that. But they too. all had the exact same facial hair. You know, Alfred mm-hmm. Woodard uh, had, I mean, they all had the same hairstyles. Uh, Nobody went know. gray. The parents didn't go gray in any way. Because I know, you know, five years if you know saying they kevin hart in his i guess 30s is what we're trying to believe that they were in so five years later he could be still late 30s so i feel like parents around that age i mean my parents were 60 um so five year jump to late 30s would be you know 65 i feel like people start growing going gray well before that if they weren't already so yeah and again it's not even you don't even have to age them you know with gray or, or wrinkles i mean it's only five years but again i would have appreciated just Something. A little, a little thought. I mean, they look the exact same. They dress the same. They have the same glasses. Yeah. I mean, whatever. I, it's, I'm nitpicking. Um, I feel like they also had the same clothes too. It's like I think he was just wearing that in the scene before five years ago. Is that just his only outfit? Yeah, that's so. why. Which is good. Why they made such a stark jump? Like, okay, here's Maddie now. Like, yeah, they've established. Okay, now she's you know in elementary school. Um, the other issue I had that wasn't necessarily an issue. I think it could have made the movie better is towards the end of the movie, uh, as Kevin Hart is reflecting on his relationship with his daughter, Mm -hmm. uh, the character, they kind of do some flashbacks to where, oh, this is the first time she walked, or this is when she first started talking, you know, like, kind of, I feel like it had they done that throughout the movie, that would have made it much stronger. Uh, Yeah, you know, establish when she's born, and then show when she's six, you know, that which is like current day. Yeah, And throughout, they could have interspersed these heartwarming moments as opposed to having this little montage at the end because you're like, oh, that's the good stuff. Like, Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying you don't have to Tarantino it. (laughs) You know, you don't have to, you know, change the change the timeline and and make it nonlinear. I'm not saying that, but some of the flashbacks worked really well here. I think they could have served a much bigger purpose had they been throughout as opposed to let's all wrap this up very neatly in a little bow at the end of the movie. Yeah. And he decides to make the decision he's going to make. Um, yeah. Other than that, though, I mean, it's a, it's a good movie. You know, it's not great. You know exactly what you're getting. Again, this is a this is a movie that's on TV. That, uh, to your mm-hmm. point, this isn't a movie you go to the theater to see. Uh, but Kevin Hart's really damn good. There's a couple yeah. of funny moments uh, when he finally gets her to go to sleep that first time. And he just goes. <laughs> Like yeah. He wants to shout, but he needs to be quiet. Like, yep. I genuinely laughed out loud at that moment. The good stuff, uh, I'd give it two and a half stars. Yeah, um, speaking like the, the funny thing, I think one of the, the funniest ones, um, and uh, it's when he's, you know, changing diapers and everything like that, and he's just, you know, doing the typical dad thing where you're shooting baskets with it, and then he shoots the one that had the, uh, um, the, the <laughs> yeah. poop in it, and it smears yeah. on the wall, he's like, and it's like, oh, yeah, why did you do that? But it's just, you know, if you get into a routine and do this and then you mess up because you do the one thing that you've been doing and accidentally uh, do something like that. So that was hilarious. And then I think um, a thing that made it feel more real, I feel like, um, which is why I think I'm going to give it three stars. Um, the thing that made it real was when he goes to um, the support group for parents and it says, you know, the, he walks in and he's like, I'm having trouble. And they're like, I'm sorry, this is a group for moms. He's like, no, no, cut your shit. This is actually, it says, <laughs> it says parents. And he said, I, you know, I can't sleep. I can't do this. I have no one to talk to. No one knows my struggle. And like, I want to be here to help. And, and, you know, like I said, I don't have kids, but I feel like if I you know, was a single father or something like that, that would be like the part where like, yes, like it, it spoke to me in that level. Um, so I feel like that's what like little moments like that throughout made it like seriously like good because I feel like you know there's not a lot of movies out there that have single dads doing stuff like that I could be wrong 
Um, I haven't just taken the time to see a lot of movies like that, but I know it's usually like the mom, the working mom's trying to do this, the working mom's doing this. And it's like to see like a father like struggling and not know what to do was like, okay, that's, you know, something that I feel like hasn't been done at least in a while. So, sure. but yeah, um, so I, I give it three stars <clears throat> out of four. Well, uh, I have a feeling this is where we become mean. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, talk about the next one. Uh, yes. The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Now, I think that there are probably lots of articles out there about why we don't need sequels. Mm. Uh, some sequels are great, you know, and in some cases, the sequel is even better than the original. Not a lot, but there are a few, you know, cases here or there. Uh, Godfather Part Two. Uh, Austin Powers, Spy Who Shagged Me, I will say, is better than International Man of Mystery. Back to the Future um, Part 2 is great. Yeah. Uh, you, I mean, there's... Uh, and then, obviously, all the Star Wars. You know, I, I don't know that you can count those as sequels. I mean, they're part of a larger story. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, here's an example of why sequels should not exist. The yes. Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. It's Ryan Reynolds. It's Samuel L. Jackson, Salma Hayek, Antonio Banderas, uh, Morgan Freeman... How do you have this murderer's row of actors, uh, incredible talent, Academy Award nominations across the board, one winner with Morgan Freeman, and you put this movie out? I, the entire time I was watching it, I was like, who, they agreed to do this. Like they said yes to this project. Yeah. And while they're filming it, while they are saying these words, did at any point they go, you know what? this is pretty terrible. Why are we doing this? Should we change this at all? And then when I looked it up, uh, Salma Hayek, and so the original movie came out a few years ago, The Hitman's yeah. Bodyguard, which is kind of an original story, I guess. Yeah. Um, Samuel L. Jackson's character is a, a hitman and he's like internationally known. He's a wanted man. Uh, he goes on trial and, but because he's so wanted, they need to protect him. So otherwise somebody's going to kill him. Yep. Uh, so they hire Ryan Reynolds to be his bodyguard. Uh, good concept, funny banter. Ryan Reynolds is hilarious. Samuel L. Jackson is always Mr. Cool, always has a cool line, a good line. Uh, and then Salma Hayek has kind of this small little part uh, in the first movie. And so mm -hmm. they were like, let's make a movie where we blow her character up to where she's one of the main cast. And she actually helped write the script. Like the director wanted her- Wait, of the second one, right? Of no. the second one. Okay. And I read this after watching the movie, like she chose those words and those were her ideas. Uh, you said you missed the first few minutes of the movie because you were, you know, late getting in behind Mima getting her popcorn. Uh, yeah. You didn't miss much. In fact, I'm jealous. And, and <laughs> uh, I wish I would have missed the entire movie, not just yeah. the first few minutes. Had it not been, had it not been 18 months since I've been in a movie theater, uh, I would have walked out, because, yeah. but I was so excited to have my popcorn, have my soda, uh, be there, have the theater to myself. Uh, I stayed, but the last movie I walked out of was Anchorman 2 in 2013. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have walked out of this one. It was yeah. that bad. Uh, the dialogue is ridiculous. The, the plot is hard to follow. Um, it didn't make sense. It didn't make any sense. I'm like, what, what are they doing? What's going on? Uh, yeah. They didn't build on anything like they're like there's a crisis we have to solve it and there's people that shouldn't be the ones to solve it but that's what we paid these actors for so they're going to solve it and it's like okay yeah it, and it was kind of like uh teenage mutant ninja turtles 2 secret of the ooze yeah the first teenage mutant ninja turtles uh was really violent <laughs> for a kid's mm -hmm. movie so when they made the sequel, they're like, okay, we're going to make the sequel, but you can't have them have their weapons. Yeah. That's why they're, you know, doing more ya 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 and using and props. Michelangelo uses sausages rather than nunchucks. Exactly. And it's like, what? So you're going to take Ryan Reynolds, who is a pretty gifted action star, you know, when it comes to using guns and, and doing stunts yeah. and doing the quips. We're going to take that away from him. And we're going to... Uh, make him like be on sabbatical. He's, he's in therapy uh, to overcome this, you know, the, the events of the previous, previous movie. Um, Morgan Freeman plays Ryan Reynolds, dad. There's, 
the, the twists and turns that that takes at the end, it makes no sense. Yep. I don't want to, t- I, I would tell you more about the plot. Like normally we try to say, this is what happens. You know, Kevin Hart yeah. is a widower and he's trying to raise his daughter. Nobody thinks he can do it. I don't know how to explain what this movie is. I was so angry. I was so mad <laughs> that, I mean, there was no, I don't know that there was a redeeming quality in the movie other than I did laugh a couple of times yep. uh, when uh, Frank Grillo uh, shoots to get their attention. He shoots yeah. up at the, and then Ryan Reynolds He's says, like, what if somebody's upstairs? <laughs> made me laugh. First nation. Genuinely made me laugh. That was a laugh out loud moment, but there was a moment that pissed me off too, where so Morgan Freeman is revealed uh, later in the yeah. movie. That's not a huge spoiler by the way i mean he whatever he's in it. yeah it was it was like a small twist but you yeah. could see it coming i'm sure yeah but they they use a line that is a nod to shawshank redemption and i was like no this movie does not deserve to do that like if you're going to do a parody uh yeah it's when he's doing a little voiceover and i can't remember the line now but it's a line from uh sometimes a uh, hope is all you need or, or something it was something along those lines i was like that's a nod like, to his character to Fred from shawshank and i was like no you don't get to do that this movie is dog shit yeah uh, i was uh anyway i've gone way too long uh what do you it, think buddy it, it's okay <laughs> i kind of thought it was garbage as well um Ugh. and and like you said i was i was lucky to not see the beginning part um but like it, it's it's like every other action movie. Every every single person is an amazing shot, um, one shot and kills everybody. Um, all the the non important bad guys, and then you know they there's this team that's brought in that is similar to the three because it's the assassin to or hitman that's you know better than Samuel Jackson. It's the bodyguard that's better than Ryan Reynolds, and then there's this girl that is a younger version of Salma Hayek. And it's like, okay, so if there's a mirror effect that this team is evil, but they're better. But then at the end, the good guys win anyway. Well, good guys, I use that term loosely because they're wanted people and, and all that other stuff. So um, there were, like you said, a couple of funny moments. My, I think one where I laughed out loud was when Ryan Reynolds is, uh, they're at the, I think it's the Vatican or somewhere in there. Um, but the, they do the, um, Tina Turner's, uh, oh God, what's her song that they use? The um, Simply the Best. And Ryan oh, yeah, is like yeah, driving yeah. and he's like, oh my gosh, she did an amazing job. He's like, that guy's the best hitman I've ever, or the best bodyguard I've ever seen. And then it cuts to him because he just took those uh, pain pills and he's sleeping on the um, the steering wheel and goes, hey, and just like laying <laughs> on the horn. And it's like, they're like, Bryce, are you okay? So that, that I was like laughing. Um, well, I got to admit, you retelling that is funnier than, than the actual part actually the watching. <laughs> yes. That's funny. Yeah. You, like, it's just, yeah, it's uh, so that was, you know, a funny part. And then like it's it's to, to build on to the everyone's an amazing shot. Everyone is also invincible, which is kind of a theme throughout because they're like, nobody yeah. can kill us. Like we're unkillable and, and all that other stuff. But um which is to say Ryan Reynolds apparently isn't either because he gets hit by two cars, gets shot, almost drowns and like all this other stuff. And it's like, how are you not like, ouch, my, like I, you know, wake up in the morning and step out of bed funny. And I'm like, oh God, and it hurts all day. <laughs> and Ryan Reynolds is older than I am. So I mean, oh, I know yeah. he's in great shape, but like no one can do all that without being like, ow, this hurts a lot. So I will, uh, I will give you your second Austin Powers reference of the episode, my friend. Why won't you die? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. When she hits him with the it's, car. Yeah. And, and then hit yeah. him with a bazooka and then blows out the window and she's still alive and then hits the <laughs> ground and she's still alive. And so it's, it's kind of along those lines and Selma Hayek, which I don't, I don't think in the first one, it alluded to her being anything other than his wife. Um, yeah. I mean, I, from what I'm I cool, remember, I'm cool with the concept of it. Uh, I'm cool with, you know, taking a minor character and then fleshing it out and making it mm-hmm. a second story. Um, but not like that. Not like yeah. this. This was terrible. It really felt like a twelve-year-old uh, re- wrote the script. You know, the the dialogue is the exposition. Yeah. If we don't do this, then this is going to happen. Oh well, if yep. we do that, then that's going to happen. I'm like, oh, this is the laziest, terrible. Like I haven't yeah. looked up to see who wrote the screenplay. Uh, uh, I the, apparently the guy that directed and wrote the first one is, 
he's like he owns these characters like mm -hmm. it's based on the story based on the characters of this guy uh but yeah. i don't know that he has much of a track record and i don't know that he'll get another shot uh <laughs> to do more it was so bad i i'll give it one star half yeah. a star is pretty cruel uh i'll go one star there were a couple of moments where i did laugh uh laugh as much i'll say chuckle because did you also notice this that every time salma hayek's character went off on one of her crazy tirades which is a lot throughout the movie she's kind of yep. a lot samuel l jackson's character laughs at it almost i as didn't if it's, notice that it's almost as if it's a signal to the audience like ha, 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 right right ha, yeah. ha, like uh, this is where we laugh right not like an impromptu thing like they just actually got his genuine reaction it was like haha ha, this is funny it was Look, usually funny. her it was usually her saying something you know you know mean or something to ryan reynolds and then samuel jackson's there's laughing at it yeah uh, so i i don't don't rewatch it you don't need to go back and check that out just nope. know that it's, he does <laughs> i was gonna take a notebook and just watch it intently so <laughs> yeah so but, i think mm. i think we're agreed fatherhood two thumbs up hitman's wife's bodyguard all while a great title <laughs> uh super regrettable movie two thumbs yeah up. yes i agree with that it's just just couldn't get into it so two thumbs down yeah all right buddy good episode uh what yeah. you got going on anything coming up um no nothing nothing really coming up um just you know doing some research to movies uh if i guess we can ask people you know if you want us to review a movie or anything like that, let us know. Cause I mean, you know, we're, we're wrecking our brains. We've seen everything and or a lot of things and just trying to, to figure out that. So if anybody wants to let us know or wants to see a movie, us review it, we can do that. Yeah. Um, leave a comment or, you know, this is going to be friends and family probably for the first little bit that are watching this. So shoot yeah. us a text. <laughs> you can reach us that way. Exactly. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do some review reviews. You know, we'll watch a movie that yeah. we've seen before with, maybe like through a different lens, like maybe through the a critic's eye uh, yeah. to really kind of pick it apart and, you know, pick out the parts that are really good and the parts that aren't, aren't so good. Uh, yeah. Some of that. And uh, I have yeah. noticed that since, since doing this, um, all the movies I've been watching, I've been like, you know, trying to pay attention to more themes or what it's similar to, or, you know, looking up and doing more research on actors and everything like that. So it's, it's kind of fun in its own sense of that. So this is, this is yeah. good. <laughs> All right, man. Well, well, we will be back next week. Love you, buddy. Love you, too.